already posted my review of the A6300, but I thought it would be nice to follow up with a slightly broader discussion of why this is my current go-to camera, why I think it's great for many people who watch my channel, and also to share some practical tips in use with this camera. The first reason is the electronic viewfinder. It took me personally some time to come around to this idea of an electronic viewfinder being better than an optical viewfinder. And while it's true that on your higher end DSLRs, those big bright optical viewfinders do still offer some advantages. But in most of the cameras in the class that you're comparing this one to, those viewfinders, those optical viewfinders, literally pale in comparison. One of the things that I really like for beginners is to be able to get feedback on what their image is going to look like. And with an electronic viewfinder, you're going to see exactly what you get before you press that button. And this A6300 and some other mirrorless cameras as well really now offer a high quality electronic viewfinder that does an excellent job of showing you exactly what you're gonna get. And even if you're not a beginner, that's helpful and you can pull up that extra window of the histogram information in there as well to get additional feedback before you take your picture. Another reason I really like the electronic viewfinder is for image review. Now, I don't recommend or don't love spending a ton of time in the field carefully looking at my pictures, but there are times where you need to know whether you got focus on that shot or whether or not you got detail in some of the brighter areas. And under some bright sunny conditions, it can be really hard with a DSLR to look at that back of that screen, kind of hiding it from the sun, you're peering close to it, and that's really crummy. But with an electronic viewfinder, I press playback, put it up to my eye, and I can see exactly what I got. I've got my little magnification button up top, I've hit that, and now I've zoomed in, and I can really check the detail, clarity, focus, exposure of my image in any kind of condition. So even though I was just talking about how wonderful the electronic viewfinder is, another feature that I appreciate, and again, this is true across mirrorless cameras, is that your autofocus performance is the same on the LCD or the electronic viewfinder. Typically with a DSLR, you only get the best autofocus performance when your eye is up to the viewfinder. And that can limit your creativity at times because I don't always want to shoot with my eye up here in some situations. I can't quite get to the angle I want, higher, lower, right down on the ground, and that limits my creativity. So I don't have to make that sacrifice when I'm shooting with a mirrorless camera. I can pull this tilting articulating screen out and have the exact same type of autofocus performance I have when shooting through the viewfinder, and that removes that kind of friction from creativity, from achieving my vision. So let's switch over and talk about a few practical items now. One of them is this focus magnification feature that I really like. I think the A6300 has implemented very well. And I've currently got my C1 button set up to trigger that. So I've got this little mushroom subject. I really want to make sure that it is in sharp focus even though it's so small. If I press C1 once, I get a little box on the back of the screen that shows me where it's going to magnify. and I can move that around using the directional pad. If I press it again, I zoom to 5.9x with this little crosshairs. Press it one more time and I zoom all the way to 11.7 and I can really tell whether or not my subject is in sharp focus. There we go. And I can take my picture. So I am using back button focus on the Sony a6300. You might have noticed that in that last mushroom shot. 
I've got a whole blog post, reasons why I think back button focus is the bee's knees. That's linked right down below. But basically, it's about being in control of the camera and not letting it focus every time you take a picture. Simply back button focus is removing focus from the shutter button and giving it to some other button, usually on the back of the camera. Hence, back button focus. It's really easy to do with this Sony camera. To set up back button focus on the Sony a6300, go to the gear five page, turn off AF with shutter, and on gear seven, custom key shoot, switch the AF-MF button on page two to AF on. And while here, I suggest the AF-MF control hold to the AEL. This gives you an easy manual focus switch that many Sony lenses lack. Now, if I wanna focus, I just press the button. If I wanna manually focus, I move the switch to AEL and while holding the button, rotate the focus ring on the lens. I know some people use AEL for eye focus, you can certainly try that, or set C2 to IAF as well. And I finally recommend that you turn off pre-AF on gear page three, otherwise it defeats the purpose of back button focus. And more generally, I have the focus area set on medium spot. I heard that the Northrop's had the most success using the medium spot, and it's pretty much all I've used for the last couple of months and have been very happy. And, the center button I have set on focus standard, which is that new feature to the A6300 that lets you treat the directional pad as a focus point selector. Again, I really like this. You just have to remember to press it again before trying to use any of the other menu items. One quick word about back button focus, a word of caution. If you hand your camera to a nice passerby, a waiter at the restaurant who's gonna take a picture of you, you need to make sure they know that they have to press that button to get focus. One downside, especially on the Sony's, is even in auto mode, focus has been removed from the shutter completely and that back button must be pressed. So I do typically shoot on manual for this camera, choosing my aperture and my shutter speed appropriate for the scene, but I leave ISO on auto almost all of the time. I find that the Sony does a very nice job of picking what I consider to be the best ISO for the situation. If I need to adjust, I'll use that exposure compensation. Why not just use ISO? Because it is about the same amount of button presses. It might actually be exactly the same amount of button presses. Well, because often enough, the camera does a good job of picking it, and I don't have to think about it in those cases. And the few times I do, that exposure compensation works nicely. If you found this video helpful, take a moment, give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, please do so. There's lots more gear reviews, tips, tricks, travel videos, all coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.